I want you to understand that you can have incredible mornings just like the one I had this last weekend. I was taking off out of Santa Fe, New Mexico with a good friend of mine. We had flown there the day before from Dallas and we got to the airport. It's a, a cool, crisp morning in New Mexico. It was an awesome break from the Texas heat. And we pull up to the airport. The tower isn't even open yet. We've got the, the, the whole airport to ourselves. So we walk out on the ramp and start pre-flying the airplane. You get that, that feeling and that smell of 100 low lead there on your hands as you sump the tanks and just kind of wake the airplane up and make sure everything is good to go. And I, I finally got to wear a sweater for the first time. It's nice and cool, and so we hop in the airplane, we yell clear prop, and the engine starts beautifully, and we taxi down to the run-up area and really just sit there for a second. As the sun is rising, and we know we're about to take this beautiful flight, and I really took it in and thought, man, I feel so blessed to be able to do this, and I want so badly more people to do this. I want more people to not talk themselves out of this because I think if they can just experience this, that they will be hooked for the rest of their lives. So we took off out of Santa Fe, and we were going up to Durango, Colorado, so it's kind of northwest of there, but because I don't have a turbocharged airplane, had to go westward for a little bit to clear some terrain, but that actually made the trip even more spectacular. So we take off, and immediately I noticed there are absolutely no bumps. It is smooth as can be because it was early, the wind hadn't kicked up yet, the, the convection of the day hadn't really started to create all that turbulence, and so it's just perfectly smooth. And the sun is rising, and what I felt was just pure freedom. I didn't feel like I was just flying an airplane. I really felt like I had my own set of wings. Because what's so fun about general aviation is that you can pretty much go wherever you want. So you're flying over a ridge and you say, hey, that's pretty, let's go look at that. Or that's interesting, I wonder what town that is. Or what's that valley? Or man, what what is that house doing out there? How do they build that big of a house there? Or what do they do out in, in such a rural area? Like how do they even get supplies out there? You can just really just explore. Or let's take another right three. 60 turn just to get one more look at that gorgeous sunrise. You really have your own set of wings. And so we clear some of the terrain uh, west of Santa Fe and make a gentle right turn northward towards Durango. And this is where things get even more spectacular because what happens is you're really on the edge of the Rocky Mountains there. So you have the mountains on your right and this gorgeous kind of interesting New Mexican terrain on your left. And what happens with the sunrise on the mountains is it, is it creates, it's not really fog, it's kind of a haze. This, this gorgeous but sort of intimidating haze off the right side of the airplane where it's just kind of glistening in the sunlight that's coming over the mountains, but you can't really see all the way through it. And so there's just kind of this gentle darkness of the mountains you can't quite see into, but you're just getting to fly right on the edge of it. And there's no bumps, it's perfectly smooth. And it's just this really majestic moment that we got to sit in for, for nearly an hour upward towards Durango. And watching that type of sunrise will really change your life. Most of the world isn't even awake at that time and you're getting to experience something um, th that's just absolutely captivating. And we land in Durango, we hop in the rental car, and we go to this incredible diner downtown, get some breakfast, and then we get to go play golf at a beautiful, beautiful mountain course, have a nice dinner in Durango, and wake up really early the next morning. And it's 48 degrees when we walk outside of our hotel. And then when we landed back in Dallas a few hours later, it was 98 degrees, so total 50 degree difference. And I got to do that in a weekend, just on, on a trip with one of my friends. Friends, it's incredible what general aviation can allow you to do. Even going from Dallas all the way to Durango in a weekend and back is totally possible. And these types of trips and these experiences are one is ones that you get to tell your friends about and say, you won't even believe what I just experienced. Why don't you come with me next time and I'll show you what it's like. You can go up to Idaho and experience the backcountry there. There's some strips like Sulphur Creek Ranch that literally the only way in and the only way out is either by airplane, by foot, or by horseback. And I don't really ride horses and I don't like walking that far, so airplane it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. You get to experience these, these mountain communities that are really built and, and they exist because of aviation. You, you can go to uh, the backcountry of Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas, has some incredible airstrips there, like Gaston's Resort, which is beautiful. You can go to Trigger Gap. You can go to many different places up there and, and bring a tent and camp under the wing of your airplane and, and float the White River or the Kings River and trout fish and bass fish 
fish and then either fly home that night or stay the night underneath the wing of your airplane and fly home the next day. All of these things are possible with general aviation. You can go just about anywhere to get the $100 hamburger, bring your friend along and go experience some unique restaurants and then fly home in your airplane. That could be on a weekend or I've been flying on Wednesday mornings. It's kind of turned into a really fun new tradition for me where I wake up really early and I get to watch the sunrise on Wednesday mornings and then land and then come to work. And so all of it is really doable from general aviation um, and, and what that can just unlock for your life. You can be a normal dude and do it. I'm definitely just a normal guy and I, this is this is where I like to put my time, effort, and resources to flying an airplane and you can do it too. And I see so many people in the comments and the emails and the people I've gotten to meet that, that will put this off for months, for years, and then for decades and maybe a lifetime and they want to pursue this but they talk themselves out of it. And so there's two resources that I know, I just, I know can help combat this. One is a new article that just got posted on airplaneacademy.com um, and it's from one of our, our new writers, Miles, and he talks about his ownership costs of his Cherokee 140. It's an amazing article, really details everything, and that's typically kind of a good entry-level aircraft. And he did a really good job summarizing all of the costs. So use that as a data point for yourself as you're thinking about getting into general aviation. Also, I think people really just talk themselves out of it and, and they, they let this one obstacle really get in the way of them actually pursuing aviation. And in the video on the screen, I'm gonna tell you what that is and how to combat it. And that is gonna be the thing that I think can help you really take the leap and finally start pursuing aviation. So I'll see you over in this video right here.